So I got to get these other 237s going. I should have a compressor for this today. So let me tell you what I found. So there's nothing wrong with the compressor. That's not where the coolant's coming from. Uh, we got it off and we didn't see any signs that there was anything wrong with the head gasket or anything else. There was no signs of antifreeze that went through the cylinders. And I was talking to Jake and Jake said, well, is that, did you put airline antifreeze in it? And I said, well, I, I'm sure we did late in the fall when we were working it. He said, well, what color is that? I said, I don't know. Let me go see. So I poured it out. It's got a blue tinge to it kind of looks like that blue antifreeze so i just went balls so uh caterpillar no longer offers their compressor for this um, this is different than a 1693 air compressor 1693 is gear driven these have a spline shaft and then an o-ring on the shaft and it plugs into the gear and then oil comes through the the drive gear in the housing and comes up through the center of the shaft and into the crankshaft of the compressor and lubes it. Um, Steve Gerber has made an adapter so you can put a C15 compressor on it. So I believe Steve's going to send me an adapter and then I won't have to worry about this again. So I called this place. They have like surplus cat parts and stuff. When cat decides to get obsolete a part or no longer carry it, they basically double the price. And then he's pimps get a hold of that stuff because cats like ah we gotta get rid of this and then they they use cats suggested price and so they sent me back and says wow we got a brand new genuine cat one well they're they're not made by cat they're bendix westinghouse they just sold through cat well they wanted twenty five hundred dollars for it i told them no way so that's not worth the money and they sent me back oh it's very much worth the money blah blah and i just went i just bought one out of california for five hundred dollars and so they can keep that twenty five hundred dollar one anyway i'm gonna put the compressor back on and we're gonna drop the belly pan down and i'm gonna unhook uh probably the oil cooler inlet because it's on the bottom the oil supply and then see if coolant comes out that oil cooler so that oil cooler i replaced that i'm gonna say 30 years ago bare minimum 30 years ago and what it did is it went bad and it pumped the cooling system full of oil. So that is a genuine cat oil cooler. And it would have been long enough ago that it was the real stuff, not the cheap crap made in Turkey and India and China they sell now. Um, but I'm sure I can't. I, I'll bet you $10,000 I can't get that oil cooler from cat. Cat used to be known for you could get a, parts for anything they made not anymore you ain't getting shit caterpillar is obsolete and stuff exponentially uh, you can hardly get parts for the tin and plastic shit they build now uh, so Thank God I'm 63 years old this year. I won't have to put up with this much longer. <laughs> like I said, Steve Gerber's got like 22 of these, and he just figures out how to keep them running. Um, I think what Steve would like to do is convert these front engines over to 3406Cs or C15s, and it's doable. I've seen it done before. 
it's all doable it's just a bunch of cost but anyway so I, I'm hoping I can diagnose this and it's maybe just the oil cooler because we re really need all three of them to go get this job done so my mission this morning is to start servicing these and get them ready to go I've been looking for a number on the filters to see how many hours are on them because uh, with the filthy whore in this one you got to change the front engine oil at a hundred hours it's just there's no ifs ands or buts about it so Matt said last time he changed them he wrote them on the filters but I don't see anything it could be all gone I don't know we've been running the filthy whore I know she's good to go like I said, I just need to figure out how many hours are on that oil and we need to get them changed. I might have to, I know, I know we sampled them last fall. when we were out on that one job and they were good didn't have any antifreeze in any of them so this thing put five gallons antifreeze in the crankcase while it sat here over the winter and well probably sat six months to put that five gallons in there since we've drained the coolant there's not been a drop of antifreeze come out the oil pan so worst case it's a liner o-ring or something or a pre-cup o-ring something like that all i can do is start trying to diagnose it and we're gonna go for the oil cooler first if we can't get anything to come out of the oil cooler then we're gonna take the cam cover off start checking uh, pre-cup seals see if there's coolant up on top of the head if there's no coolant up on top of the head well then it's the pan it'd have to come off and you'd have to see if it's a liner o-ring or a liner I don't know that just makes me sick so I'm hoping it's something easy I'm getting tired of hard stuff. <laughs> really tired of it. Okay, the one thing Cat did a really good job of in the 70s is they went to these environmental drains on the engine crank cases and the hydraulic tanks. So the wind's blowing, so I put this under here. I'll loosen that, fill this bucket up, and then fill the last one. It makes it so much simpler to not make a, a mess everywhere. <clears throat> so, let's see if I can get this undone. They're kind of tight to break loose, it's just a tapered plug, but simple to operate. got a way bigger opening than number one or two uses a seven eight socket to undo it the other ones are just a three quarter but they do the job if you don't have something usually what we do is we put a bushing in there and then we have like a five eighths or three quarter hose barb and we get a piece of hose and if you've got a bucket with a lid you can just undo the top cap on there and then stick the hose in and fill them up 
and then shut this off and then get another bucket that way you just don't make a mess of anything so this machine has the still has the old uh, canister style filters on it so it's going to have to sit here with a drain plug open for quite a while for the oil to drain back out of those canister filters and uh, yeah, hopefully that wind don't blow, blow that crap all over me and then I can change them I uh, once I have the spin on you gotta let them sit a little while all the air comes out of them and that way when you undo them they don't run all over I wish the wind wasn't blowing I would really love to put switchblade turbos on number three number two it would it would double the oil life which would save us a ton of money one of those things I need to get done I don't know if you knew that or not. The one mistake you don't want to make is to screw this all the way out and have it come out. That's fine on the second bucket, but not on the first one. Be interesting to see how much we get out. See, the wind's blowing pretty bad. I'm afraid when she gets down to the end, she's going to start spraying all over and make a mess. This old girl might have been low on oil. Really low. She's an oil burner. I think because the turbo's pumping oil. Wow, she was low. Low, 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 Gabriel. All right, let's go get a lid and get this dumped. Okay, so this is my tote, and I got a guy that takes the used oil to heat his shop. So when I'm full, he just brings me an empty tote and takes this one back with him. Yeah, I put my phone in my rear pocket, but you don't put it in there. Okay, operation engine oil change is complete. Change the filter, wrote the hours on it, 10,580 in the date, 923. Spilled a little bit. Filthy horse was a little easier because the bell doesn't come down on it. And so that ram's down there where you can get in there and pour oil without a lot of trouble. So I just need to start it and make sure those canisters don't leak now. Okay, hang on to your butts.
success. So here's the compressor off number one. And like I was explaining, so this is an adapter, but inside here there's an O-ring. And that seals the oil. There's a bearing here that goes over the end of the gear and the lube goes down through the bearing in the gear and then there's a hole so that it goes in through the end of the shaft so I want to rebuild this number three filthy whore uh, I think right now has an unloader problem and she only wants to pump on one cylinder and it won't keep the air up very good so I'm gonna rebuild this one just put an unloader kit and everything in it and then if I need to I can put it on number three but you can't buy an unloader kit from cat so where in the world could I find an unloader kit for one of these this is a TF 500 is what it is anyway I just I need all these little deals and the springs and stuff that go in them the cylinders look good it's a 20 over reman so anyway i've got uh all my oil changing done i just got done running number two and uh it's all working no oil leaks so tomorrow morning it's time to get out the grease gun and put on the coveralls there's about a million grease fittings on these things to grease and get that all done get them fueled up and then these two old girls are ready to go and then the compressor is on my front steps the new one I can get that in there and then drop the belly pan and take that oil tube off the cooler and see there's still some water in the block the, the cooler will be full of coolant we didn't drain it Let's see if there's any antifreeze coming out I hope it's something simple cuz I hope it ain't like a liner o-ring or something I don't know like I said I'll have to take the if it's not the cooler it's got to be something under the cam cover a o-ring on a pre cup or something and if it ain't that then it's serious it's a liner o-ring <laughs> I hate this hate this just when you think you can go to work you can I never expected number one to peter out on me like that anyway it's only got 2400 hours on that engine <laughs>